Uh, I'd like to welcome to Pi Data Global 2021. I'll give our like to give a warm welcome to our speaker, speaker Adam, uh, who is Dr. Adam. I'm sorry if I misprint. Uh, how do you pronounce <laughs> your name? So, Adam Zodrożny. I know that it's Karch. It's... He, he's an a astrophysicist working at National Center for Nuclear Research and a lecturer of natural language processing at Cognitive Studies Master Program at Faculty of F Psychology at Warsaw. In the two 2018, he was at the Center of Gravitational Wave Astrophysics at the University of Texas Rio Grande Valley. Uh, Valley. Following that, he defended his doctorate, doctorate at the National Center for Nuclear Research. He took part in the first detection of gravitational waves by the International LIGO Virgo Project. As a PhD student, he was an intern at Facebook Inc. And since this is his talk, I'd like to pass the mic over to him. You can go ahead, Adam. Thank you very much. Okay, so my talk will be about usage of Python. It's, it will be a bit. I'm an astrophysicist, so I usually work with a lot of with a lot of data and and stuff. But I also interested in using Python for every every day for a life, for everyday stuff. But one thing that came to our attention recently with with me and some some of my coworkers was that if we if we have, for example, a law. And we try to analyze it. The, the, the stupid question, we would like to, uh, there is a need for a kindergarten at the, at the new university campus. How many documents we need to read to make sure that the place that is, that is chosen uh, would fulfill the uh, requirements? And the problem is that if we go through the, most of the legal systems, if we try to answer the question, in France or in Poland or probably in Ireland, we need to go to, through the multiple documents. It's not only the, the one, uh, one document uh, that would say, okay, so, so the building has to get the certain requirements, but probably in the provisional acts uh, for the firemen uh, and uh, for, for or a fire station, there, there will be information. Okay, you can you can assume that the building is safe if uh, there, there is cer certain criteria meet. So for uh, for the other uh, services that need to approve the kindergarten as a building, there will be another set of requirements, and then you can end up with uh, reading almost a big chunk of the law. And this is a bit of a hypothetical question, but very similar one. My friend, uh, she was opening a kindergarten in the in, in the buildings uh, office buildings next next to the offices of the new open new company. Uh, but what what I would like to show in this talk is uh, how we might try to uh, get a better grasp of the law using NLP and Python and and big data and try what we can get by this analysis. This, this would be uh, uh, more about showing some ideas and sh some work that has been done than the tutorial on the uh, NLP data, but we how to, how to deal with the law because we are, we are working mostly on the Irish and Polish law. But, we'll, but I would like to show some ideas how we can, we can use Python and its ability to process text very nicely to, to do that. Okay, what is the law? It's some kind of a system of rules and guidelines which, we, which are enforced through the social institution to govern the behavior. This is a Wikipedia definition. If we look on the, if we, if we start looking on uh, how the law look like, this is a, a part of the Polish law. I, I know that the most of you uh, speak English, but certain patterns you can you can you can see like for example that this is a reference to some internal document. There might be some references if you if you see something like that. It might be a reference uh, to some internal part of the act, so s some kind of an article or a point or w whatever. Uh, so this is so the, then. You have a logical part of this text. Uh, here you have the articles. Here you have uh, some points 
of, of article that was start, starting before. And here we have the information that we would like to access the external document. Uh, so for the civil law, it's which, which we have mostly in Europe, uh, we rely on the text that uh, that that has been uh, go through the parliament. Then on the there is no binding uh, way of the court verdicts, uh, with with some exception of Supreme Court and Constitutional Tribunal. This is the the only two exceptions in the most of the uh, countries in the European Union. Uh, in the US and UK, a common law system where the court cases play the major role is a, a bit on the difference. So the rest of the Europe, uh, apart from Ireland, Air, Ireland and UK, it's on the different side. So the, the problem, the other problem that we have with the law that it's not a continuous text. There are references inside the documents and reference to the external part. And what is more uh, intriguing, there is uh, incoming external references that could not be, when, when, when you read the text of the, of the law that is published on the parliamentary website, there is no information about the incoming uh, reference to the, to, the, to, the, to the certain article, which might change uh, what, what that means. Especially, sometimes there are also not, not named references, so you, you might have the article in law that if there is, uh, uh, this is some kind of a transition law from Poland, if there is uh, anywhere mentioned the uh, militia, it, you, you, need to, you need to understand that it's meaning the police and uh, police, so there is a substitution which do not reference to any particular act, but it's referencing to many acts. So the graph is a representation of a set of objects where some pairs of objects are connected by the links. And it's, uh, notice that this is exactly this, this case. We have some references, we have the notes, we have the logical part. So basically the law can be expressed as a, as a graph, in fact, the multigraph, because there is a possibility of multiple connections uh, to the same note getting from, from, the, from, the, from the note. It's, so it's safer to say that it's multigraph, but uh, I would try Rather really use uh, refer it as a, as a graph. So uh, notes it would be a logical parts of the text, and uh, you can have a top note which is a chapter of some kind of a law, and then you go to the articles, points, subpoints, uh, letters, uh, so so the characters and stuff like that. And the address is a connection between the logical parts, note parent connection and connection to the external documents. So what, what are the sources of data? If you would like to just grab it and, and, and get the data. So in, in Poland, it's Dziennik uh, Usta for Monitor Polski, but it's only in PDF, no API, so not, nothing interesting, but there is a source of the law, which uh, internet uh, system of uh, legal acts, which have the API uh, and allows to getting, uh, getting, uh, getting the data. In Ireland, for example, there is an Irish study book there is no API whatsoever, but there is, uh, but uh, but it's you can get the XML, but it's not so easy because you you need to get the full act. You need to go over the several XML pages. So it's, but they keep the, the certain format. So so this one 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 good thing. There was there used to be something which is called the Bundesgit, which uh, you can you can get the German law in the Git. But there was no commit from uh, beyond 2013, so so this is pretty much dead. But if you would like to analyze it, it's uh, it might be interesting interesting stuff for for you to do. And it's easy to just make a clone and and you can you can get the data. It would be funny if somebody would uh, just put the pull request to change the actual law to this one. But unfortunately, nothing like that happened. Uh, so uh, if we look on the on this example act, we uh, here we have the some kind of an act from uh, from Polish law, and we have the article uh, which have this certain uh, sub points. So we have uh, five sub points to the first article. We have a second and third one. So if we go here, we have if we try to dissect the, the certain act, we, we have the name of the act, some kind of an introduction which why we would like to, 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 to push through this law. And there is some information about the reference, the external acts 
especially the changes to the external arts. So uh, if we go to the articles, there are certain subpoints, and those subpoints could refer to one another. There's one uh, on the fourth subpoint we mentioned the, the point uh, in the fourth point we mentioned the point two and three. So and this is in some way uh, defined form. Here we have uh, the uh, the reference to the to the first point from the act. There is no no text uh, just after the act, or or here is only a little. There is there is no text after the the article starting. And here we have on the article three we have okay we have some kind of a definite then we starting to to do the reference to the to the uh to the to the later notes. So basically we can have some kind of a, a graph. It's not a tree. Certainly it's not a tree because the, uh, there is a possibility uh, which is not shown here that the node could reference the, 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 the upper, uh, some, some other node. So we can, we can have from the lower ranking no, node reference somewhere up. Uh, yeah, so this is it. And if we would like to try to start processing uh, law in this way, we, we get some, our hands on some uh, raw text. Uh, the, the stack that we were using it was it was Python with Network X library, MongoDB as a data storage, and uh, to get the information about uh, references inside the document, because references between the documents are easy to grasp, and sometimes if you have the you no know, in HTML, you got the references just like that, uh, but. To, ref to make the reference inside, you need uh, regular expressions, but also with addition of some fuzzy logic. Uh, bear in mind that the law is written by humans for humans. So there will be a lot of mistakes. For example, bracket that is never closed, uh, some quotation that never ends and stuff like that. So uh, Fuzzy logic allows us to, to, to say, okay, there is something committed, but it still seems a valid link. So let's let's get it. And Gephi was, was our visualization uh, engine at some uh, at some point. Uh, we, we also some key plots that we are using in publication. We were uh, just uh, doing the post processing in Adobe InDesign. So how it, how how would the pipeline do uh, work? So first you get the data through the API. Then you get the raw text. Then you do the parsing once more because if it's if it's not parsed, and then you do the linking. So you save to the database a link a link version of a of a text, uh, and for for the parser, if if we try to make make a full parser to to, to get the the whole uh, capture whole structure, you you just need to you start with the header, then you get get the section which are optional. And and you have uh, you, you also put uh, chapters uh, chapters are optional sections are optional but the stuff that you are ending up with are articles and sometimes you get the appendixes and then you have sub articles uh, numbering sub numbering so so this is you, you are just getting getting down with uh, with all the uh, all the stuff there was a question on the chat if there was a cir circular references. Yeah, in the authorship law, I think Article Fifty we find or Fifty One we find something like that. Uh, so, so this it's it's possible sometimes. Uh, if we are getting through the act, so so this is how if you if you read the text of Polish Constitution and you pass it to the, uh, to, it's it's a pretty straightforward text. The the Constitution text in general, uh, it has to be understandable uh, by by everyone, by, by all of the citizens. So there is not too much legal language. Some kind of the laws that we would like to keep in our country. It's the same with the US constitution, the same with Irish constitution, uh, with Polish one. So this is not very, very complicated one uh, document with not a lot of references. There are only certain references. If you, if you wonder what, what it's here, here is the inf information about uh, freedoms uh, in the country. It's a second second chapter, and here you have the article uh, two hundred thirty three, which is very deeply connected to many of it, and it's for the time of war. 
which which freedoms during the time of war or civil unrest could be evoked for some time. This is this is the the one of the articles. Here it's some some articles about the uh, what are the sources of the law. There's about the president, and here is the about the courts. So so this is the courts are linked with. Uh, with the sources of the law and, and other things. So there is, there is not much connections here. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, but this is the text which is, which, which is not a direct law. It's some kind of, should govern the, 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 of the law. But then if we go to the core, the one of the most important acts in Polish law, which is a value added tax or the tax that you pay when you buy something in the shop. For example, uh, you see the nightmarish view, because the, the current version was established in, in 2004, and comparing with the constitution, there is a lot of highly connected notes, and it's very frequently updated even for up to six times a year in Poland. And executive acts could be very short-lived, even up to four to five weeks that we found during the analysis, which which was extremely short, even for a Polish law, which is really unstable. And here you, you can see something which is which, which we call transmission belt or triggering points, because there are certain points that are very deeply connected from almost every chapter. This chapter, it's almost inside the circle, which is uh, which seems when, when you can lower the tax. This is the this is the chapter that a lot of many court cases. Uh, in Polish uh, administrative courts uh, went on because it's uh, not really to understand that if something changes here or here, it might influence also those arts. So if you change any of the notes in this, inside the circle, then you might propagate the change in the law to different, different notes. And for example, if you're running business and you, you rely on certain of those notes to become stable, you, you don't only need to track those, you need to also track those, the other, the other group. So, so the changes might not be local in this case. Uh, yeah, and, and putting too much law in, in one place uh, could, be, could be deadly, uh, could, could be a, a little bit deadly because sometimes if, if something is removed, it could propagate. Like for example, one uh, one point was uh, mentioned by the by the Irish court as un unconstitutional, but they could only ruled out the, the lowest lowest possible note, which was the uh, na name of the substances that are illegal, which made uh, drugs legal in Ireland for one day. Okay, doc. So uh, this, is, this is some kind of historical grabbing, and and this is uh, uh, this is for, from the b period between the wars. And you can, if you if you do the whole legal system, you can you can find uh, the certain parts re regulating healthcare, country governance, communication, which which was a bit uh, and also railways, which was in in in. During that time in Poland, it was uh, a state within the state. It was the backbone of transportation. So it was uh, almost self-governing bodies. But for example, country governance, trend, and industry was quite close to, to one another. Um, this is the, how the, the Polish look, law looks like in 2014. So there was uh, quite a lot of notes, quite many connections. And this is the Irish law, which was the common law, which was much more comp uh, compact. Here it's more than uh, 40,000 active points. There is only 3,000 points, which not uh, 3,000 points that were over the course of 90 years. Uh, so tax law, it's quite a big one. Social welfare, industry and play, it's detached, but social industry and labor and country governance are quite close to tax. Criminal law, it's somewhere far away from uh, from the tax. So there is certain structures that might appear, which is highly connected notes, clicks, uh, tree-like structures, or even a fund structures, uh, which, which was, con this is from the Irish law, which shows the amendments to the, to the act in the common law. This, this structure is, is very common in, in common law system like UK, uh, 
UK or Ireland. So the number number of facts may, it shows how the, the common law things to be much much more dense and easier to govern the country and uh, with the with the law which is um, not a common law but but civil law the the number of acts for example in Poland could be extremely high. Um, yeah, so data science uh, science and in law could be it's it's always safe. Not really. The, in, for example, if you if you try to link uh, do the data analytics on the judges in France, it's uh, you can get five years for that. If you if you target certain judge and which arguments appeal learning, it's 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 forbidden. Uh, for the last, the, the, I'm I'm just going through the through to the end of the talk. Um, it's uh, if you look on the for the redundancy. Okay, I, I it seems that I need to finish right now. Uh, if you look on the redundancy, you can uh, there is a multiple definition of doing business, and you can get grab it from from each of act and compare it how similar it is. Uh, there was in the in the document. If you look on those definitions, there is no uh, way to to link those. There is no the text is similar, but they are not linked. If you change something, you can change it for a certain part of the law, but it starts uh, starts to be unified by using the reference to the to the one common definition. Okay, doc. What 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 think we would like to do with NLP and law? Question answering, but there is a need to uh, of a good data set. Abstractive question answering the same, but we need the data which usually the legal companies uh, have, which is not not openly available. Uh, uh, checking of the do two fragments if they are opposite. There are no production ready tools to, to to see if the if there is um, if we can can comp say that two parts of the law are contradictory, and what are the difference between the the fragments? The, the same situation is here. So there is. It's a quite unexplored area. So the ultimate question with uh, uh, one of the questions that, that we would like to, to answer is what will happen if we change the one, one line of the law? How, how fast it would, it would spread? It not necessarily means that uh, if there is a connection, they are dependent. This is another tool that, that has to be developed to, to see, see if there is a dependency. Uh, but at this point, uh, we are assuming that there is. Uh, so we we can process the law uh, using NLP uh, and Python to some extent, and based on that, we can create the tools that will allow the citizens control over the law and the creation of the legislation. But the the biggest problem in analyzing legal system are the sources of data. Uh, what is more, the good law is crucial for economical growth. It's crucial for stable growth and uh, and sustainable growth. So this this is kind of important. One one more argument why we why we are trying to uh, that we are trying to to get this uh, try to analyze the link is that if we can squash the parts of the text that are relevant to to, to case we can we can use question answering and we can try to analyze it by using AI and uh, and also the using the methods that we already developed in NLP. So thank you very much for your attention, and I would be happy to uh, to answer any questions, comments. All right, we've got one uh, from Tom. Oh, I think this is more of a statement, but I'll go ahead. I think that the reference connection between documents do not always imply that those documents are mutually interdependent. Uh, uh, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, it's it's not necessarily that there is there is a dependency be between that, but so as as I mentioned, there there is a need to to develop uh, a classifier which which uh, to to see if the relation means some dependency or there might be an influence. So this is this is uh, this is one one yeah that that's right that the not always means the dependency, but in many cases it does. In the most of the cases that, that we have, there is, I would say that in case of Polish law, it 
probably it would mean it will be 10% of the cases that it would there will be no dependency. In the most cases, there there is. Um, there is uh, aggregating more. Yeah, the 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 one with the aggregation of uh, more specific data set for the for the users that I mentioned, the more advanced users. Uh, the best source it would be uh, it it would be some uh, either the legal companies which would not make it public or pro state prosecutors. And in these cases, it might be possible to make it make it as open data, especially for the old cases that are uh, hundred years old or or fifty years old. So then, then we could uh, could possibly access this data, uh, unless unless there are some legal companies would like to make it open so, or non-profit organization of lawyers. This this might be another source of the data to assemble it fast. Uh, we, it's possible to synthetic, synthetically assemble such a data set, but it would uh, you need a lot of skilled manpower to do that. All right, there's another. Uh... Question, I believe, Kestis, sorry if I get that wrong. Any ideas on how to approach on aggregating the more specific data sets for more advanced applications, such as you mentioned? There was, uh, there was a mention about the dependency hierarchy of the sum laws. And in the most countries, it's there is such hierarchy that, that we get the constitution. Then probably if, if the country is a part of the European Union, then European Union, then treaties. International treaties, then European Union law, then then the local law. So so there is some kind of a hierarchy, but uh, it's not always uh, officially stated. Uh, sometimes it's a customary. Um, with the fairness of the law, it would be uh, it would be hard to make make such analysis. But if if the law is easy to understand, it I would say that it's you can say something about fairness. In this case, because we don't need the specific legal advice, but um, but with with the fairness, it would be it would be really hard to uh, to judge it to, to fully judge it. We, in, in some extent, we can use the NLP tools, but uh, to 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 see if if there are, if there is a measurement between the both parties, if they are equal, uh, but in general, not uh, not uh, not. It would be a very hard question to answer using the NLP and, and uh, Python data processing. And definitely, thank you. Thank you so much for your talk. And I'd like to wish you well for the rest of the conference and just have a wonderful day.